Something was slowly killing 12-year-old Dylan Nielsen. His parents were desperate to identify the mystery illness, but when they turned to local doctors for help, they found themselves against a healthcare system that didn't have room for second opinions. Here's 16 by 9's Heather Yorex with this incredible story. In the twinkling eyes of this beautiful baby boy are the usual hopes and dreams of his proud parents. Dylan was the only child Penny and Tyler Nielsen were ever able to have. But this adventurous little guy was more than enough. He loved helping out on his family farm or even just hanging out with his little dog. Dylan lived his life outside. But his sun-soaked days were numbered. The teachers at the school started emailing and saying, there's, Dylan's not the same, there's something's wrong, mm -hmm. he's, he's not here. He would get tired, have headaches, and experience small but constant seizures. He didn't want to go outside anymore. We didn't really know what to think of it. We took him to our family doctor. Dylan's life as he knew it came to an end at age 12. Since then, he's lived like this. Teenage years spent away from sports and friends, shut inside a darkened bedroom. Unsure of what was wrong, the Nielsens turned to a neurologist to help solve the mystery around Dylan's symptoms. What they didn't know was that this appointment would kick off five years of torment for the family. We had an MRI done. The initial response was uh, for, for Dylan to have the symptoms he's describing, he would have had to have been a boxer. Dylan was, was never a boxer. In the end, the neurologist referred Dylan to a psychiatrist and told them Dylan was likely suffering from depression. But the MRI did reveal something unusual. There was a cyst on Dylan's pineal gland, a tiny pine cone shaped gland located at the center of the brain that produces a hormone that regulates sleep and wake patterns. But because small cysts are common and usually occur without symptoms, the specialist called the finding incidental. Yeah, meaning that, yeah, so what, there's a pineal cyst, it's not a big deal, don't worry about it. Incidental diagnosis or not, Dylan was sick, and as time passed, his condition did not improve. My headaches are pretty bad. My eyes, like, they look like they're bleeding and stuff. Hurts to move them side to side. The exercising, I, I go unconscious. Dylan's teenage years were slipping away, living in a world of darkness. I get up, get some breakfast, go back in my room, Basically it. And as his frustrated parents tried to get a second opinion, for some strange reason, that would be impossible. They've all said that he's crazy, he's making it up. Specialist after specialist would turn Dylan away. Feeling abandoned, Penny began a desperate search of her own. I'm not a doctor, but I had to be a doctor. And he's my baby, I'm not going to give up on him. And decided to learn all she could about this pineal gland cyst. Penny, through her research, found people in the States with similar symptoms. Everybody that, that was complaining of these symptoms that she talked to had the same pineal cyst. Found five people now that have had it removed. Their symptoms went away within weeks. Their search began in Tacoma, Washington. Prior to the anti-seizure drug, Dylan was pretty much a zombie because he was in almost constant seizure. Doctors diagnosed Dylan's seizures. Anti-seizure drugs helped but only to a point. And again, the pineal gland cyst was brought up. But to pursue this possibility, Tyler and Penny were told Dylan needed a Canadian specialist for a referral. So they went back to Alberta, this time enlisting political help. It was just uh, shocking. Even MLA Rob Anderson couldn't convince other doctors to give the Nielsens a second opinion. Every time Dylan, Dylan's family tried to get a second opinion, the specialist that they went to would always go back to the original doctor. Nothing's wrong with them, and so the, the, uh, the second opinion specialists would keep denying to see him. And, um, and it was just uh, a terrifying thing to see in our country when we have supposed to have health care that you know, uh, takes care of this, to see him struggling and to see his family being just devastated. Taking matters into her own hands, Penny discovered the Skull-based Institute in Los Angeles and brain surgeon Dr. Harar Shahinian, who did what no doctor had done for the Nielsens before, offered help. The location and size of his pineal cystic tumor uh, made us believe that either some or most of his symptoms were coming from this lesion. I could not explain any other cause. I could not find any other cause. It was overwhelming to, 
finally, after all these years of me trying, there was lots of times that Dylan told me, Mom, it's okay, just, this is all there is going to be. But I refuse to listen. I'm not going to, I know my son. The procedure would cost the Nielsens more than $300,000 because no Canadian doctor saw a problem with Dylan's health, it was not covered by Alberta's health system. Dr. Shahinian waived his fee, and the clinic agreed to allow the Nielsens to pay for the other medical fees as they raised the money. On December 23rd, far from home, Dylan went into surgery. It was eight and a half agonizing hours long, but the results was stunning. Uh, as soon as the nurse told me that the light wasn't bothering him anymore, that he saved my baby. And uh, he wasn't going to be in pain anymore. One day later, this. Dylan walking in a brightly lit hospital hallway. The result of a successful surgery. His parents shocked to learn that not one cyst had been removed from Dylan's brain, but two. And the one in the bottom was the size of a golf ball. That one came out, that was a water, filled with water. But the pineal one that was really bad, it was plugged solid. So Dylan's brain was building fluid in his brain, but it couldn't drain. Without the cyst once diagnosed as incidental, Dylan's symptoms disappeared. And here we are on the beach, the Zuma Beach. It was freeing. It was after so long, you just felt just like a weight lifted off. You could breathe. It was just to see him smile. And 13 days after surgery, the boy who missed out on going to high school and countless summer days watched the sunset over the Pacific with his family. The Nielsens have filed a complaint with the Alberta College of Physicians and Surgeons against the neurologist who originally misdiagnosed Dylan. They'd also like an investigation into why they were denied a second opinion. The college will not comment on this case, but says every complaint is investigated. And as for the medical bills, eventually Alberta's health care system did step up and pay. It was our system. It was a system malfunction that forced them to, uh, to go to the United States and save their son's life. A new beginning. Dylan finally free to walk in the sunshine. I don't have any symptoms anymore. Everything's gone. Yeah. But yeah, I don't have any. <laughs>